All right, recap the um, performance Saturday Wake uh, players at game on offense is Rick Jones. Had some big plays, uh, really did good in the blocking game. John Crawford uh, played every snap defensively, uh, which is quite honestly uh, too much, but did a great job. I think he had you know, 10 tackles, two pass breaks ups. He was uh, six of six on one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Uh, really didn't have anything in kicking. Uh, our punter did a nice job. We punted him as far as stat numbers, and all our kicks were, were deep in the end zone. Uh, but we didn't have a specialist. We thought the impact of the game. Um, our scouts for young guys, um, again, T.J. Simmons is kind of uh, helping out, um, uh, as was recognized defensively with Johnny Albamonte and Nick Ramica, who's a uh, second-year offensive lineman, is doing a great job on the scout team. Guys, we thought played well besides the players' game. Marcus Oliver and Richard Fan also joined Crawford defensive performance. Up far front, we thought uh, Wes Martin, uh, by far uh, his best game to date. Uh, with a lot of effort, a lot of energy can be better, but thought he did really, really, really well. Uh, had some big plays, uh, but again, of course, we had a lot of negatives. We had, you know, five, five interceptions, um, and you go through those five interceptions. Now, two are on receivers. They hit their hands. One's a competitive play on third and four, and their DB makes a play, and our guy doesn't, and the ball bounces there. We got to be strong enough to make that play. A ball in the end zone goes off a receiver hand, uh, where, again, you're basically playing volleyball and setting up. Um, one play call, I think, structurally, um, the protection didn't match the passing spot. Our quarterback got hit on delivery, so to me that's on play calling. And, one, and the last pick was a, was a greedy play call on my part. Quarterback had one forced throw. Should have checked it down on a play that went to quite honestly. So those picks go to uh, the quarterback, and he's responsible. But turnovers are a team deal. Uh, we had none as a team defensively. And that's stopping the run and getting them on third and long, and that's getting after the quarterback and, and attacking the ball, and then same thing offensively. You know, those turnovers are a team deal, coaches included. So we're minus five there, which is huge in the game. We have many critical penalties, and you're always going to have some penalties, but uh, our second defensive play after we've scored, we get a turnover, but we're offsides on uh, the defensive front. So that, that's a possible probably score opportunity. Uh, you got in the first half where it's going to be first and goal in two. We have a holding call. That's, and then a, a blocked field goal comes after that. Blocked field goal is actually on the, the kicker and the holder because the clock was running down and the holder called for the ball for the kicker was set. And our get-off time needs to be under 1-2, and it was 1-4. Matter of fact, the guy blocking actually ran by it. So it wasn't like a blocking error or anything like that. It just, you know, clock's running down. We're late. I wasn't, and play wasn't late coming in. I mean, as soon as it was fourth down, we said – Phil go over, we're laid out of the huddle. The guy's got strong enough leg. We could have, I didn't see it. I was taking the time out. Um, so that's my fault. Could have took a delay, but it was just a poor communication led to a field goal block that also came after a hold. You've got an unsportsmanlike penalty on the quarterback, which is probably more critical than his picks because you're at the eight minute mark. You got to score twice. Uh, and after second 19, we've got it third and six. We'd have been on schedule if you take the penalty out. So that's, a, that's, that's, we needed two scores at the eight minute mark. Um, we go down, we've got a fourth and one, get a holding call in the line of scrimmage. Um, matter of fact, if we make the field goal, we're probably kicking a field goal there on fourth and one, and it's a nine-point game going to six instead of a 12-point game. So just way too many, let alone the one defensive drive. Uh, one face mask it was in the perimeter, and I, 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 you know, it's called on Marcelino, and I don't know if just can't see on tape, but so why we just got hands in the face. We did get the quarterback on face mask, and we did tug a jersey and get a hold. So I think they had a 65-yard drive with uh, 50 yards of penalty. Same time, going into that game, uh, we were second in the nation in turnover ratio on the plus side. So it ain't like all of a sudden we just had a bad – we've got a long history of taking care of the ball. So we'll hopefully be able to clean that up. It'll be a tough challenge with the defenses in the Big Ten. We're getting ready to see a great one this week. Um, but we've got to take care of the ball. We've got to run it better. Wake Forest had 50 rushes. We had 32. You know, and we got to find a way to get the running game going. But when you're playing with a group that's got a bunch of guys up in there and, you know, there's some one-on-one -on -one plays, you got to take them, and, and we did. And the team we're playing this week, they're, they're historically one of the premier defenses in the country, and they do it by, by having guys that can play lock man-to-man. -man. It's loaded box, and it's tough sledding in the run game. But we got to find some run game uh, because, again, we got outrushed. Yards per carry is the same, but just attempts. You know, they had 50 rushes. We had 32, so we got a little, 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 little bit more pass there. We did have some pass numbers, but we got to find some balance, and that'll be tough in a lot of these games we're playing. We've got to find it. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, we held them to, uh, I want to say, nine punts, six three and outs. 
They scored two touchdowns against the defense. You know, so that's four against the defense in three games. We had 611 yards offense, so we're sitting there 2-1, and one, and we're frustrated. But we got a lot of talent, and it's talent that we got to get coached, take our performance seriously. Had a good week of practice last week. We're off to a good start with what's going to be a great challenge. Uh, but we got to get back on track, and we need to fight to win games, and it'll be a difficult challenge with Michigan State, who's a heck of a team. They're coming in. Uh, didn't play well last week by their standards. And that's probably several teams in our league are, are really, really strong. Um, but that program across the board doesn't backseat anybody with strength of program. With the way they recruit, develop players, coach players, play in all phases, kicking game, kicking fakes, defense stopping the run, uh, defense not giving up big plays, balance of offense, players. Um, that's why they've, what, won 10 games or more, like four of the last five years or 11 for the last five years. And, you know, they've been Big Ten champions playing in the playing in the playoff last year, and they were off to a good start. And they, they played a good football team last week, and Wisconsin played well, but they're a good team. And just like, just like us, the goals are in front of them. I know they're going to have a good week. Uh, we had a great crowd last week. It looks like we're set up to have another good crowd, and hopefully we have an opportunity to have a great challenge and, and buckle up into Big Ten East football. So big week and looking forward to disappointed with the, the outing, not disappointing our kids, correctable mistakes, and great, great challenges in front, great opportunities. Questions? What's, what's his response been the last couple of days and has it been to your liking? Real good. I think the only thing like we've talked about prior was how even Keel and Kami was. And I think maybe that's why, you know, I mean, because you can't hide. You know, you know, sometimes the guard goes the wrong way and nobody knows it. You know, his guy gives up a sack because unless you're, unless you're the guard's mom watching him and knowing assignments, a lot of guys can hide. A three technique can go the wrong way and hide. But when you're playing out on an island, whether you're a receiver or a running back or a DB and you're in the open field and you can't hide. It's like the golfing world. It's, it's you, the opponent, the ball, and God. Ain't nobody, you know, ain't nobody, ain't no hiding here. And, and you know, I, that's the first time I've seen the first. Matter of fact, they, they actually gave me a warning that he had gotten frustrated and said something to the other team. And, I'm like, and I was like, really? I go, you know, what'd he say? And I said, hey, man, chill out. Well, you know, we were still struggling there in the fourth quarter and he got frustrated and, his frustration's got the best of him. So other than that, he's been himself. And he was back in yesterday watching tape. We had some good meetings with him. And, like, there's a lot of good things. Like, there's one force. And to me, it's a collective team effort. And coaches are part of that team. And we just all got to do better. But um, like the way he's doing, the guys behind him are doing good. Uh, but, yeah, I just, I, you know, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think he mismanaged anything where there was, like, he wasn't doing well. And he had picks. But where my hit to me had one, one really forced, like, wow, what, what did you see? Why? The other things I could account to, to me or some players that didn't help him out. And, you know, the quarterback looks good when the surrounding cast does their job, and he gets all the credit. And when the surrounding cast don't do their job, then he's, he's the bum. And, you know, he's, he's a product of the group, and our group let him down. And he'll, he'll do well. He should. <coughs> Is that it? Shucks, I was trying to. Cut. <laughs> uh, but right after the game, I guess Mitchell was and, and Rich kind of got together and watched a little bit some of the film. Just what does that show for maybe the maturity of the team? The fact that before you guys even get to them, they're, they're already trying to figure out what kind of fix it. I didn't know that one. You know, so that's you know it, it is. Um, you know, like, 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 you know, when you talk about your team, like, 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 you know, TJ's been fighting through a little bum knee and hadn't been full going enough to want to play yet. He's got a red shirt year. We'll decide if it's used, if he gets back. But he was on the scout team. He came up last week and said, Coach, let me tell you something about something I saw that I think could help you. And when you have players that are doing that, that are upper players, that's when you think you've got some buy-in and some, some investment. So I didn't know they had watched it. You know, in this day and age, you know, our, our athletes are all uh, able and something we pushed years ago to all have iPads. And with that, there's an app that they get access to a cloud where them and them alone can watch our videos. So that's, uh, I'm sure every kid has seen, has seen the good and the bad. You know, I know when I played years ago, whether it be a practice or a game, you're sitting there saying, you know, I, I can't wait to see this play because that's a great one. And then like, oh, I, I sure hope he goes through that one pretty fast because I really messed that one up. So as players, you always knew that coming. Our guys get a chance to watch it. So that's, that, that's good uh, because we did talk after the game about not being negative, but personally, they need to own their performance. 
and personally address it and come back with better body language and, 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 and better mindset and let's correct what's correctable and, and control what we can control and let's get better at what we can get better at. So that's, that's, that's good news. I didn't know that. But I'm not surprised. Saturday, but health-wise with Dimitric and Dan, I, I guess, number one, kind of how are they progressing? And number two, how do you feel like the guys that have had to step up behind them? Well, one, you know, and, and again, sometimes I guess I talk fast enough, maybe it doesn't come out right all the time, but I didn't think their injuries outside of being seniors, the performance regressed significantly. Even though Dan's a better player and the best lineman we have, you know, that position at guard, Half the time you and the center are working together, half the time you and the tackle are working together. So there's not a lot of time. I know because I played guard. If you can't play guard, you're off the team. Okay? Because when you go through the positions of what, I mean, it's the last stop, man, is guard. I mean, because tackles are one on ones. I mean, you know, if you can't play, if you, like I tell the quarterback all the time, you don't play right guard. And not, I mean, Dan is one of the all time great right guards. I had one in Oklahoma, Davin Joseph's off the chart was all pro, was the one of the greatest players ever coached playing right guard. There's not a lot of stress at that position. You got a fifth-year guy like, like Jacob Bailey coming in, Simon Stebniak played some as well. That position sometimes, now, now they will get tests with Malik McDowell, who's a big-time three-technique inside guy. But sometimes that position, he's, that position is not on an island a lot, a lot. Brandon Knight is healthy, and his play at right tackle uh, was, was no – no different than probably what Demetric would have done. Demetric's a senior and a veteran, but Brandon's got a lot of talent. So, so outside of the fact you lose seniors and you lose the leadership of their presence, I don't think the performance really regressed or had any issue on the football game, our ability to run or not run. I mean, Wake Forest came in, they were top 13 in the country and run, pass, total, and scoring. You know what I mean? And, and, and we didn't run a lot, but we ran for 115. I think they were giving up. 50 or 60 something coming in the game because it's a loaded box. And they weren't giving up a lot of big pass plays. We attacked them down the fields where we thought we needed to go. So, you know, the, the line play had nothing to it. I'd like to get those guys back. I saw Dan doing a lot more yesterday. Today was a light teaching day in our, in our, in our, prog our program, what we're doing. Um, but I think as, as he goes through exercise-induced activities, it's just a matter, I think, of, of does he have headache issues? And when that's clear, I, th I think our doctors are giving it clear. So they're just pushing him through work. And after work, if he's feeling good consistently, he's going to get to go. If he's got any recurring, like, where, you, know, it's not, you know, it's not stepping backwards. It's just going through the process. And I think it's called exercise-induced in activity to, to get the response of where he is. To make just going through it back, and those things are, are ginger. And we just need to see where he gets to. Cleared and got his feet wet a little bit. Uh, how, how soon do you think maybe his role could be expanded? Yeah, well, again, he's been practicing a couple weeks. And... Um, um, you know, again, he just needs to, you know, again, that's a talented guy, but let's, uh, you know, you know he's, he's got to get on the field and prove himself here. And he has in other places, and he's coming off the injury. And sometimes when you've been sitting that long, there's, there's a little rust that sets in, and it's knocking the rust off, and it's getting, you know, back to speed. It was good that he was cleared and got some plays. I think he probably played a handful, five, six, seven, in some of our bigger packages. He's playing outside receiver now, and uh, he was looking good at practice today. We'll just kind of work, keep working it. And uh, see, see how it goes. You know, last week we worried about you know, who's going to step up at receiver. We had 200 yard receiver, 100 yard receiver. I mean, he'll be in the mix to play there, though. And we need Donovan Hale and a lot of those guys to keep coming. Back and reviewed that fourth and one with Nat. Would you do it differently? I'm sure you have confidence putting him in that situation, but it also seems like a lot for a freshman to put his first snap. Yeah. Um, you know, again, for, for 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 where it was and not not being greedy on, on it. Because, you know, one of my issues with field goals is not the kicker. Because we've had two that, you know, it's just the timing protection. We're not been as clean as we need to be. And, uh, you know, when you see that in practice and stuff. So, to me, you know, where, where we were with it, it's just, you know, that we, we had, I mean, we ran it later and scored. And just didn't work that time. So, I mean, you know, we, we, we took our, what we thought was right. Uh, we got a leg that can definitely kick the field goal. But the way our protection had been. Uh, it was kind of in the fringe area where, you know, should we or shouldn't we? Um, maybe hindsight early in the game like that. Uh, instead of taking that 20-second deal, probably maybe next time let the clock run out, take a timeout, let's talk about, hey, are we good to kick it? You know, are we, and we're going to play a lot of games. So if, if I got a regret is maybe, you know, making a quick decision or sometimes the way we go with our uh, – we had talked at the eight-minute mark with uh, left in the game, we're down 12 points. Hey, if we get – 
a quick three and out, we're going to kick it and use timeouts. Well, we kicked and didn't even need to use timeouts because we had a couple out-of-bounds plays that helped us. And then the next time we used our timeouts, we were trying to maximize our possessions. And so that being said, I don't know if saving timeouts is, especially in the first half, is big for us. So if I have a regret, it's maybe taking a timeout and getting the defensive side of things. Hey, do y'all want to hear? You know what? You know, you know, you know, talking with the kicker, talking protection, talking play. Where hey, we made a 10-second decision. Uh, 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 let's go for it. And of course, we'd already decided plays we wanted, so the, the play call wasn't hard. It was the decision of what to do. And if I had a regret, maybe sometimes. In that situation, probably maybe should have took a deep breath and got more thoughts. But I made the call to live with it, and it didn't work. I know you've always talked about kind of being an offensive guy and not necessarily leading the defense to its own devices, but, but empowering those coaches. But how do you, I guess, diagnose what you've seen on that side of the ball through three weeks? One good. Uh, can be better, though. You know, I mean, sometimes, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes it's the defense. Sometimes, you know, offenses, it's still – their lack of execution, making them beat you. So, I mean, we got so many things that we need to clean up because we'll be stressed and tested much harder this week and weeks to come just with schematics and playmakers and skill set, line of scrimmage play, et cetera. Um, you, you know, I, uh, we work together a lot in practice. There's some crossover. Hey, we're going to go together in a blitz period. What do you want to see? We're going to get together in a running period. How, how, what can we do to help each other? Because there's a lot of times, no matter what the opponent, we're going to run a lot of plays very, very similar to the opponent. We're also going to run some plays very, very different. So we don't need to muddy your vision. So we go together quite a bit so you see them. Um, but really, it's, it's, um, um, it's, free. It's, it's gotten me where you know, I'm spending a little bit more time trying, trying to be a, involved with the kick side and with the offensive side. And Coach Allen's running that ship, and, and um, you know, I, I'll give you my two cents from an offensive view. Here's what I think. Here's what I, I see as an offensive guy. I think they're seeing. Because sometimes I think, you know, as a coach, you sit there and say, well, this is what they did last week. But sometimes you got to look at you and where you're going to get attacked. And so as an offensive guy, I'm trying to think like, hey, I'm watching their offense, and if I was them, I think I would do – you know, some things. So that's, that's my input to the defensive coaches as an offensive my During the game, I'll click over and say, hey, man, I think they're four down territory. Just FYI, because I think that changes second down and third down calls, you know. And so, uh, but Coach Allen, I think, is doing awesome, um, great presence, great standard setting. And uh, uh, I still think, though, he will tell you he and his, uh, he and his players aren't close. And uh, um, to give up a couple of the big plays we did, the penalties on the one drive, self-inflicted wounds, you know, the – no turnovers. Uh, I think he's, you know, at, I'm sure it's digging him deep. And I know he'll work hard to try to address it without pointing fingers. Just get his guys to keep playing better. And we're going to need him to. Turnover, or, uh, timeouts left in the first half, you know, 58 seconds on your own 25. Is that kind of a feel thing? You know, Richard had already had three interceptions. V very much. Kind of flush it Even though we can score, you know, we go through. I think I had it at one point. I don't know if I got it here. But we went. We went in a string after we scored the first touchdown of we had the interception in the end zone where they then ran out to the 40. We had a punt where nothing happened. Every time they punted, nothing happened. You know, matter of fact, there's 15 drives and only eight of them ended in a kick. We had five turnovers and we had two times on fourth down that we went for it. And so, you know, punting the ball is better than giving it to them or kicking a field goal and getting points or, of course, scoring the touchdown is the ultimate deal. And you finish with the PAT. So, um, we had, we had um, um, uh, eight times where we kicked the ball. We had three punts in the game. Um, but there was a string after that, 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 that first touchdown in the first half where it was a turnover. It was a punt. It was the fourth and one on downs. It was the turnover. It was another turnover. And now it's like 50 seconds. It's like, hey, and they had just had, uh, you know, pulled a drive out. Like, I don't, you know, made a play. I was like, wow, okay, that kind of – it was, it was third and three, and they pop a 27-yard run to midfield. And then the quarterback scrambled out on another one. Now, the next thing you know, they're on the 26-yard line. They, they make a shot on us, make a really good play. And, uh, you know, at that point in time, even though we can score in 50 seconds, we had a couple big plays later, um, I just felt we needed to go in and cool down. And if, now, if we'd have popped the first run and got out of the gate, then things were going to change. But where it was right then, and they had two timeouts. And the way it was going, I, you know, if we had thrown it three times in a row or they, took, they take two timeouts, here comes the punt team again. Here's maybe a, a punt return or a punt block. So I just felt at that time, just risk management, let's go in, let's come back out and play one play at a time and one possession time, try to get back in it. That was, the th that was my thought at the time. 
they meant to ask you this last week. There had been some <laughs> with some other games where guys get ready to score a touchdown, drop the ball right before we get in the end zone. Um, did you, because of that, did you have to talk with your guys and make certain you get in the end zone before you get up the ball and you hand the ball to the referee? Did we didn't. Of course, we always at pra- at every one of our practices here that we have our, our managers and you see them in, in referee shirts and that's because every play you give the ball to the referee and that, that helps us play fast and so we're you know we, we like if you throw a pass in a practice that's on the ground we're supposed to pick up the ball and give it to the re- our manager that's your ball even if it's on the ground um so we're used to doing that but but the only thing i'd say Pete, is, is that we just we did show those plays you know we showed the kickoff return and the guy caught it and threw it to the referee you know, so and and we we try as much as we can to educate. There was a um, uh, uh, play in a in, in a great game with two ranked teams two weeks ago, where there's a defensive scoop and score, and one team's really rolling, and 30 yards behind the play, there's a cheap shot, and with the cheap shot now they they you know they 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 uh, they're kicking off from the 20, and the guy kicks it out of bounds. Now the ball's on the 50. Two plays later, the team behind scored, and the team come rolling back and. They're one of the best teams in the country. And if, I think if the score was 24 to 3, but it went for 24 to 10. There was a punt return 24 to 17. And, you know, we showed our team that, you know, at, at Florida International, we had a sideline penalty on, a, on the one pick six. We kicked off from the penalty of the 50, and that's one of, the, one of their scores. And so, you know, we, we just we try to educate the guys. And, you know, I, I, I watch a lot of football, and I don't really pull for guys. But I, I'm, you know, you're, you're looking at situations, you're looking at plays, and there's just a lot of learning situations. And I think because kids this day and age are so uh, video acclimated, I don't know how much ball, football wear, football common sense, athletic common sense guys have. And um, so we try as much as we can to educate our guys on how to be a little bit more aware and learn from others' mistakes. You talked about Richard tried to throw it to a guy one time. That was like a John Madden player, Madden player, right? Like, yeah, I should say, like, video game. Uh, like, you know, like, you know, the Superman x-ray vision, see, you can't throw a ball, it's against one of my laws of physics, it's against, you cannot, laws of physics as a football cannot travel through a person, you know, but quarterbacks, that's why I want to stick it through there, like, it don't work, so we got to do a better job, though, with the hands, we got to do a better job with our receivers there, we got to be a lot, we got, we got to be a lot tougher, we got to be a lot more physical, we got to find some run game. We got to take care of the ball. We got to do things it takes to win. Because now we're, we're playing uh, that team last week. We came in and played good team ball. We had some good stats. They played. They played as a team. They played in all phases as a team, and they won the stats that teams need to win games. And that's why they got a W. We'll need that this week against a very, very talented, very prideful program that, uh, to me, is one of the one of the programs of not only our conference but college football. So a strong, strong test. Anything else? Yeah, um, you know, we shared it with the team. Um, you know, my wife was actually uh, uh, driving me since the late game, you know, was driving me to the hotel that morning where the team was, and she got a call from one of the coach's wife. So just very, very uh, uh, sad there. Um, tough deal. Um, she, she grew up, our first recruit for Co- Coach Walker was um, – a young man in, in Oxford who dated Terry's daughter. So not only was Terry on the, st- on, the, on the staff, but dated her. Matter of fact, I had a couple of those players on that team hit, hit, shot me a text when they got news. So uh, just pray for their family. And uh, it's tragic. No children. I, matter of fact, I think a couple of our coaches are tied in where their kids are tied in with, their, with, with her kids and personally knew her. So it's, um, it's a tough deal. But we send prayers and love to them.